I am Anil Kumar. We are trying to understand characteristics of functions and in this particular video we will see how to define interval where the graph is positive or negative. So let's take it like a quiz. So I'll sketch here a few graphs. Let us say three of them and you need to write down the solution for when is the graph positive and when is the graph negative. So let me sketch some graphs here. Let us say in the first case I sketch a line going through the origin and let us say equation of this line is y equals to x. In the second case uh, let me uh, sketch a parabola whose equation is y equals to x square. Let us say minus 4 since it's moving downwards and here let me sketch uh, a cubic function right so let's sketch a cubic function here which is kind of symmetric about the origin and uh, let us say these zeros are uh, at uh, so we'll write y equals to let us say this zero is at minus 2 this is 0 and let's say this is 2. In that case we could write equation of this parabola as this 0 x plus 2 times x times x minus 2. So that becomes the equation of this particular graph. Now the question for you is when are these functions positive and when are they negative right. So this is your positive x axis and that is positive y. So you can pause the video. For this cubic function, we need to write when is the function positive and when is the function negative. Here is my solution. Positive means when the value of the function is above x-axis or the graph is above x-axis, then it is positive, right? So whenever we say positive, so positive means graph is above x-axis and negative means graph is below x-axis, right? So, so that is what it is. So basically when you are given an equation or even the graph, you need to figure out what are x-intercepts. So that is the concept. Once you know the x-intercepts, then it becomes very easy to specify when is the graph positive and when is it negative, right? So for your convenience, we are given equations which are very simple to solve so that you could understand the concept. The very first y equals to x, now when is it zero? Now this function y equals to x is 0 at x equals to 0, right? So this point is 0. Similarly, we have to equate 0 for y and find the value of x. So in the first case, it was 0 equals to x, very simple, we got a value. In the second case, y equals to 0. So at x intercepts, y is 0. So we substitute 0 for y and then calculate the value of x. You can rearrange, write this as 4 equals to x square or square root of 4 equals to x. Remember, whenever you do square root, you have to write plus and minus and that gives us two answers, plus and minus 2 equals to x, correct? So we have minus 2 here, plus 2 there. And for this graph, if the equation is given to you, you can write 0 equals to, let me re rearrange, x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. And this will be 0 for 3 values of x, x equals to 0, x equals to minus 2, and x equals to plus 2. Do you see that? So those are the three values shown on the graph. So first step for you is to find the x-intercepts. Once the x-intercepts are known to you, then you can exactly write when is the graph positive and when is the graph negative right so let's write down our answers now so for the first one we'll say positive is when x 
we see we could write x belongs to real numbers where x is less than I mean sorry positive is greater than 0 in this case sorry so x is greater than 0 correct and in this form for negative we'll say x belongs to real number when x is less than 0 you get the idea so that is how you could write the interval in which the function in this case y equals to x is positive or negative now there are different ways of writing these intervals we'll use a different convention in the next example so here we see that the parabola represented by y equals to x square minus 4 is positive in the interval from minus infinity to minus 2 and from 2 to infinity this we could write as let me use this space we'll say it is positive for the interval minus infinity to minus 2 right this is one interval and the other one is from 2 to infinity is it okay so in these intervals it is positive and when is it negative it is negative between minus 2 to plus 2 do you see that minus 2 to plus 2 so that is the interval in which it is negative now when I use these brackets then 2 is not included right so 2 is not included and you can never include infinity correct now using either of these conventions I will like you to write down the solution for the third function which is a cubic function right so when is this function positive and when is this function negative correct so this is like a shortcut so I'll use this interval to write down when it is positive it is positive between minus 2 to 0 not including these values right and it is also positive when we consider 2 to infinity right so from 2 to infinity and when is it negative it is negative from infinity to minus 2 so we write minus infinity to minus 2 and uh, from 0 to 2 so from 0 to 2 remember these brackets are not square brackets square brackets means included now these brackets means not included correct so that is how you could actually write the interval in which they are positive or negative at times you can also show it on a number line right so let that be an exercise for you anyway in this particular video I hope you understand how we can figure out which part of the graph is positive and which part is negative at times when we are given the equations we may have to find the x-intercepts to write down precisely what is the solution right so that is how we can actually do it now let me give you a test question here let us say we have a graph here okay let me squeeze it in here small one okay and let's say there is some function which I'm just drawing randomly right like this now the question is when is this graph positive when is it negative now if there is a random graph whose equation is very difficult to figure out you need to identify or label some points just say this point is a this point is b this point is c and then say from minus infinity to a it is negative and it is negative between b and c also correct so you could at times if it is very difficult to find the x-intercept on the graph mark these points and use them to answer the question I hope that helps thank you and all the best